Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of Hanson Mansour University. Today, we have an important topic, which is adolescent endometriosis. And we will cover it today according to the European Society for Human Reproduction and Embryology Guidelines 2022. Okay, what are the objectives? We will speak about endometriosis as an introduction, then diagnosis, treatment, fertility preservation, and adolescent endometriosis. Okay, let us start with the definition of endometriosis. Endometriosis is a chronic gynecologic disease characterized by the development and the presence of endometrial glands and stroma in anatomical position and the organs outside of the uterine cavity so when there is endometrial gland and the stroma outside the uterine cavity it is called endometriosis can occur in the ovary uterus sacral ligaments sub ovarian fossa pelvic peritoneum and so on Endometriosis occurs in 10 to 16 percent of women of early reproductive age and frequently manifests with chronic pelvic pain and dysmenorrhea in adolescents. What about the prevalence of endometriosis? The prevalence of endometriosis among adolescents was assessed in a systematic review by Janssen et al. based on 15 studies conducted between 1980 and 2011 included adolescent girls with dysmenorrhea or pelvic pain and endometriosis was laparoscopy laparoscopically confirmed in 62 percent of cases imagine how big is the prevalence of endometriosis in adolescent girls who complain of chronic pelvic pain or dysmenorrhea 62 percent so what about the incidence of endometriosis in adolescence first you should know who the whose age is called adolescent those young women under the age of 20 years so under the age of 20, we call it adolescent. Okay? So the incidence of endometriosis in adolescent with chronic pelvic pain is reported to be ranging from 25 up to 73%. Imagine how big it is, is, a, is the reported incidence in this study. This incidence in those complaining of chronic pelvic pain. Okay. The pathophysiology of endometriosis in adolescent is largely unknown. Endometriosis has been described not only in post menarchal girls, but also in prepubertal. Imagine, can happen also prepubertal. But post the telarctal girls, after development of the breast, telarctal, but menarche didn't start yet. We found some girls with endometriosis in such age. Imagine. But of course, if it had happened before puberty, the theory of retrograde menstruation cannot be accepted in such case. So, you should know that endometriosis etiology is a multifactorial, especially in adolescent girls. There is other factors causing endometriosis. So, what about diagnosis? Let us start with the risk factor for adolescent endometriosis according to guidelines of fishery. 
In adolescence, clinicians should take careful history to identify possible risk factors for endometriosis. Like what? Like obstructive genital malformation, like malaria and agenesis, positive family history, any member in the family complaining of endometriosis, her sister, her mom. The girls with early menarche or short menstrual cycle. Clinician may consider endometriosis in a young woman presenting with cyclical absenteeism from school because of pain or with use of oral contraceptive for treatment of this menorrhea. What about the clinical symptoms? In adolescence, clinicians should take careful history and consider the following symptoms as a suggestive of the presence of endometriosis. Cyclical pelvic pain or chronic or a cyclical pelvic pain, particularly combined with nausea, dysmenorrhea, dyskesia, dysuria, dysperonia. If the adolescent girl was sexually active, she will complain of dysperonia. Okay? What about clinical examination according to guidelines? The GTG recommend that before performing a vaginal examination and the rectal examination adolescent, the acceptability should be discussed with the adolescent and her caregiver, taking into consideration the patient age and the cultural background. Suppose this girl has an intact hymen, she is a virgin. She may not accept to do vaginal examination or transvaginal ultrasound and so on. So, all these factors should be considered. What about imaging in adolescent endometriosis? According to guidelines. Transvaginal ultrasound is recommended to be used in adolescent in whom it is appropriate as it is effective in diagnosing ovarian endometriosis and the other pelvic lesions, the pericycular lesions, the pelvic endometriosis. If transvaginal scan is not appropriate, especially in adolescents with an intact hymen, you should search for alternatives. The alternatives include transabdominal ultrasound, transperineal or transrectal ultrasound, or MRI. What about laboratory parameters? Serum biomarkers, for example, CA125, are not recommended for diagnosing or ruling out endometriosis in adolescents. So you can't depend on these markers, like CA125, in diagnosing or ruling out endometriosis. However, we all, all of us know that with severe endometriosis, it is expected that CA125 to be increased, but I can't depend on it for diagnosis or excluding the disease. What about diagnostic laparoscopy according to ESHI guidelines? In adolescents, there may be a predominance of atypical red or clear lesion as compared to adults. So, you know the implants and the different according to the American Fertility Society and the revised one, the color of the implants and the type of lesion. It is commonly it will be seen in during laparoscopy in adolescent endometriosis, the red or clear lesions, vesicular lesions, compared to adults. In, you know, in adults we can see other different lesions, black, blue, powder burn appearance, and so on. 
In adolescents with suspected endometriosis where imaging is negative and the medical treatment with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and or hormonal contraceptive have not been successful, diagnostic laparoscopy may be considered. May be considered and this is a weak recommendation. What about histology? If laparoscopy is performed, clinicians should consider taking a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis histologically. Although negative histology doesn't entirely rule out the disease. Okay? This is a strong recommendation. So what about treatment? Let us start with the goal of surgery. Why we get we do we treat endometriosis for suppression of pain, suppression of disease progression, preservation of fertility. Three important to go. Okay, what about medical treatment according to ASHRAE guidelines? An adolescent with severe dysmenorrhea and or endometriosis associated pain. Clinicians should prescribe hormonal contraceptives or progestogen systemically or via levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system as a first line hormonal therapy because they may be effective and safe. However, it is important to note that some progestogen may decrease bone mineral density. And this is a strong recommendation. The GDG, the guidelines, recommends clinician consider non steroidal anti inflammatory drug as a treatment for endometriosis associated pain in adolescent with suspected endometriosis, especially a first-line hormonal treatment is not an option. And this is a good practice point. In adolescent with laparoscopically confirmed endometriosis and the associated pain in whom hormonal contraceptives or progestogen therapy fail, Clinician may consider prescribing GnRH agonist for up to one year as they are effective and safe when combined with add back therapy. We know that there is some side effects for GnRH agonist if taken for a long time, but with add back therapy will minimize the side effects. So it is effective and safe when combined with add back therapy this weak recommendation. Okay. The guideline development group recommend that in young women and adolescents, if GnRH agonist treatment is considered, it should be used only after careful consideration and discussion of potential side effects and the potential long-term health risks with a practitioner in a secondary or tertiary care sick setting. And this is a good practice point. What about surgical treatment according to ISHRI guidelines? In adolescent with endometriosis, clinician may consider surgical removal of endometriosis lesion to manage endometriosis related symptoms. However, symptoms recurrence rate may be considerable, especially when surgery is not followed by hormone treatment. And this weak recommendation. Also, the GTG recommends that if surgical treatment is indicated in adolescent with endometriosis, it should be performed laparoscopy. So laparotomy or laparoscopy, laparoscopy is the better, is the best. By an experienced surgeon, and if 
possible complete laparoscopic removal of all present endometriosis should be performed and this is a good practice point. What about combined medical and the surgical treatment according to Eschigar life? In adolescent with endometriosis, clinicians should consider post-operative hormone therapy as this may suppress recurrence of symptoms. So after surgery, please give hormonal therapy to prevent recurrence of symptoms. And this is a strong recommendation. What about fertility preservation? In younger women, it is expected that the quality of the banked oocyte or ovarian fragments will be higher than in older women. So, the quality is better in younger women. If fertility preservation is considered in young women with endometriosis, it should be done before ovarian surgery is carried out. The GTG recommend that adolescents with endometriosis are informed of the potential detrimental effect of ovarian endometriosis and surgery on ovarian reserve and future fertility. This is a good practice point. Okay. Fertility preservation option exists and the GTG recommends that adolescents are informed about them. Although the true benefits, safety, and the indications in adolescents with endometriosis remain unknown. There are no studies evaluating the efficacy or relevance of fertility preservation, namely oocyte cryopreservation in adolescents with endometriosis. So, still this a point for research and the many studies are running right now. Clinicians can discuss fertility preservation in selected patients. Who are these patients? Such as those at risk of ovarian damage, which can include but are not limited those with bilateral ovarian endometriomas or those with unilaterally operated endometrioma with contralateral recurrence. You know that ovarian reserve is decreased if there is bilateral endometrioma, if the after surgical treatment, ovarian reserve may be affected. So, fertility preservation can be guided towards those, those adolescent girls at rest. Bilateral ovarian endometrioma or those with unilaterally operated endometrioma with contralateral recurrence. This is the end of my lecture today. I hope it was helpful for you. This is my box published on Amazon, textbook of obstetric, textbook gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, medical disorder in pregnancy, and the gynecologic oncology book. You can find the guidelines also in gynecologic oncology book. To find my box, you can go to my link on Amazon. I put it in a comment. And also, you can find many other lectures about endometriosis and other topics in obstetrics and the gynecology through my link on YouTube channel here, and I'll put it in a link also in a comment. Wishing you all the best, everybody. Thank you.